We are in Huntington County, driving through the mountains on our way to Parker Dam State Park. All right, so we are at the park office. We're gonna go inside and see if they have magnets. We're hoping they do. Anyhow, we got ourselves all plugged in. And I just wanted to show you the site. So we're parked back in here and you can see we are just covered in shade here, which is really nice. Um, nice and cool. All right, so Shannon's still back there finishing her lunch. But over to the left is the fire pit. There's a lantern ring. And then back behind us is nothing but woods. So it's a really nice little private site. I'm just sharing it with you because if you are going to be in this area and might like to camp, this is a pretty cool site. Yeah, this is where we're going to be for today. Tomorrow we're heading up to Cook's State Forest. Right, Shannon? Right? Just say right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> we've decided we're going to do some easier trails today. Um, I'm kind of easing back into hiking after hurt, hurting my back. <clears throat> really, really easing back into it. But anyway, I'm going to show you on the map what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so this is the um, map of the Parker's Dam State Park right here. And it has all the trails on it. So we are right here. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is walk down and catch the boardwalk trail. And it runs right past the lake here. And then it crosses over the dam over to the CCC buildings. They have a really cool museum there. We're gonna check that out. And then we're going to take it from there. We yeah. may possibly go up to the this, vista. which yeah. this is called, what? what is it called? Trail? Trail of the New Giants. Right. It shows the path of the... Right. Back in 1985, one of the worst tornadoes in Pennsylvania came through this area. And there's a huge swath of... Um, blow down. Blow down uh, hemlocks mm -hmm. and pines that were mm -hmm. destroyed. And then if not, if we get here and decide that... Trekking up the mountain's not a great idea. We might come over here and check out this boardwalk mm -hmm. and the logging area here. Right. So we're going to check out the lake area. Yep. Start there first. All right. Okay, so this is one of the trailheads up here. We are in the Quahana Wildlife Area. And they have some photos here um, of the devastation that happened. Now, this is a result of insect infestation, etc. And then the tornado came through. So it really did a lot of damage in this particular area. And some of these trails will take you around um, the damaged areas. This was not in 1985 when this tornado came through here. And like I said earlier, um, took down a lot of the uh, pines, a lot of the hemlocks, uh, pretty large swath. So we might be seeing some of that. But this area also has a whole lot of the CCC history here. So, so Shannon and I were here last January. You see where it says Parker Dam up there? You can see that. Now, we had parked way across the lake over there. But you can see it from way over there. You'll see it in the video that we did. We did a road trip in northern PA through the wilds in the elk country. It was really pretty. like you have to go down around this way and then cross over to get to the other side that's where we're headed but here's the run all right so we've got a rock hop across to get over to the other side here okay so we've seen two snakes <laughs> shannon's over there tape videotaping <laughs> Not sure if you can see, but right there, definitely a snake. Second one we've seen in about 30 seconds. All right, so we just crossed over, and this kind of brings you out across the dam. And this is the CCC Museum up here. Like I said before, we were here in January, we did do a video. Talking about the CCC influence here, 
and they open this up on volunteer basis so in other words if they have somebody who volunteers their time to come out they'll open it up if they have nobody here today it's a monday yep it's a monday all right so this is from the 1930s era Ooh, this is called yep and that's what it's called adam's leaning wheel grader number 22. so this is something that was used pulled along i guess by this tractor man i'll tell you what this guy did a lot of work all across the united states a lot of infrastructure for our state parks national parks So the first dams in the area were actually beaver dams and the ccc chose this spot to build a lake a, a dam to create yeah. a recreational lake yeah. a logging contractor in the 1800s william parker parker's dam mm -hmm. used it for the first site of one of five splash dams along laurel run a splash dam released water quickly to float the large pine and hemlock logs to waiting sawmills yeah, so wow. back in the day, they pretty much stripped the lands here. And everything was about logging. Yep. Logging and um, kilns and yeah. iron ore and, oh gosh, all kinds of stuff. And then the CCC came in and replanted. <laughs> Thank yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Because this is what we have now. There are only a few um, old growth forests left. A lot of what you see nowadays is not old growth, it's new growth. And we are going to be visiting an old growth forest tomorrow. But we are here in front of the museum. Shannon's going to try to get some video. But it's kind of a cool little building. It's a really pretty area. So Shannon and I are going to do the, what's it called again? The New Giants Trail. That's what it's called. Anyhow, that trail takes you up over this ridge. You get to see the, um, trail, of the uh, trail of the New Giants. You get to see the uh, the tornado, the path of the tornado, how much it took out, and the regrowth of the forest. That's why they call it the Trail of the New Giants. So these beautiful pines and hopefully hemlocks um, are regrowing in that area. They were decimated by bugs um all different types of like beetles and things like that i think a gypsy moth and then when the tornado came through it it was just a just wiped it out so they have a great big sign up that talks about the history of what happened in this area on may 31st of 1985 this wind speed was clocked at 250 miles an hour blew down 500 acres and along the storm path, 26,000 acres were destroyed. Lasted um, 90 minutes and went for 60 miles. It was one of 20 tornadoes reported in PA on that particular day. So must have been some really bad weather for it to cause that much damage. So interesting, this is the second area up here because Kinzua Bridge was also Tornado. Right. Mm -hmm. Path. All right. So we just came off the trail of the new giants, and there's the Parker Dam uh, stone sign that we showed you guys earlier across the lake. All right. Anyhow, we're going to be heading down this way past the beach area, and there is a um, boardwalk trail that we can take to get back to the campground. But just, yeah, right mm -hmm. but just, we're only about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile from the campground at this point. We've just done a great big loop and went up the mountain and back down. And now we're going back around here and it'll loop us back around to the campground. All right. All right. So we're getting ready to do the boardwalk trail. There's a big sign here. So Karen and I just got back from exploring. 
to discover our very first rattlesnake snake spotting is actually in our fire pit. You can see him off to the left there under the grate. He has come out and he just will not move. He has no intention of leaving the premises. <gasps> there got him. There he is. Do you see him? Mm -hmm. So he's in there. Yeah, we're gonna back away because I can't tell where his head is. And yeah, I'm not I'm not willing to mess around with a rattlesnake. So like I said, we got back and in our fire pit there's a rattlesnake. Okay, so I flagged down a park ranger. I saw him coming up the road. <clears throat> and Nice guy. Yeah, real nice young guy. And I told him, I said, we have a rattlesnake in our uh, fire pit. Can you get it out for us? He was like, oh, yeah, sure. So he pulled over up here. He had a snake bag and his, and his big clamp. And he got it out. And he's got it in the bag. He says he'll, he'll take it a half a mile away. And he just acted and let like... It out. Yeah, but he acted like it was nothing. Like that. This was nothing. Yep. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah. no, we don't have the snake anymore, but we're a little creeped out. So very creeped out. <laughs> Might be hitting Starbucks in the morning for the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Shannon and I have decided that we need an after you see a rattlesnake in your fire pit beer. If I'm ever gonna sleep tonight, I need it. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> so we were gonna pop open a beer. Oh lordy no. lord. Alrighty, so tonight on the menu will be some homemade tomato spaghetti sauce. Out of Karen's garden. Yeah, those are my tomatoes. I cooked them down yesterday, some of my tomatoes. Out of her garden. And my basil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I made some homemade meatballs. There we go. And, and Karen's nifty uh, reusable. <laughs> yeah. They're cool. They're nice. Yep. And then I've got some rotini pasta. I thought that would be easier to deal with. The gluten-free stuff, right? Yeah, that's All the right. gluten-free. And yeah. it's the first time we're trying this. This is a Ronzoni brand gluten-free pasta, which I have found to be very good. All right, so we're going to heat up the meatballs. And then we're going to add the pasta and the sauce to it and warm it up. Put it in a bowl. Sprinkle some Parmesan on it. Call it dinner. I have some oat bread and some ghee butter that we're going to have with it and in the meantime we're going to have some pretzels and some cheese to go along with our rattlesnake beer <laughs> dinner has been moved upward <laughs> yes we're in the safe zone up here yep. okay. and we are still nursing our, after you see a rattlesnake beer yep. <laughs> so, uh, but what we wanted to share with you is something that we learned through um, our, our van life trip out west was that rather than preparing big meals every night we just didn't have time for it um, and when we're out doing uh, our hiking and visiting places the last thing we want to do is spend a bunch of time cooking and cleaning so I do a lot of meal prep at home before we go on our trips and this meal was real simple it, that was just um, some tomatoes out of my garden, and I cooked them down with some garlic and some olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and I have basil, fresh basil in my garden. I had cut it up, and I just let it cook down, and uh, we're using that as a sauce, and then I cooked up the rotini, and it's kind of al dente, and some meatballs. Yep, so, so we're, we're just, just warming it up. up. Yeah, we're just going to warm it up and eat it for dinner tonight, and that's a pretty easy meal for us. So we've kind of gone from... Karen's gone from cooking, camping cooking, to um, we do a lot of reheating and assembling, yep. which is, is just as good. All right, those are good enough. All right, so these are pretty Wait. much... <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing at my socks and shoes. No, I'm laughing at the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. the All right, so... Um, the anti-snake stance. Yeah. So I'm going to add the pasta now. 
I'm gonna let that kind of warm up. What we did is we put just a tad bit of water in the bottom of the pan to kind of steam everything. I'm gonna let this kind of warm up first. Try this much, we'll try that much pasta first. Do you want the lid back on it? Let me put a little bit of water in there to steam it. Okay, yeah, go ahead and put the lid on. And we're just gonna kind of steam that for a second and then throw our sauce in there and call it dinner. Well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> This is rattlesnake cooking at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no rattlesnake getting Karen. No. <laughs> so, I'm adding in the sauce now. We are reminiscing our snake encounter stories. Yeah. So, that was our first rattlesnake yeah, encounter. We, we never in a million years would have guessed that's the first time we would see a rattlesnake was in our fire pit in our at our campsite. In fire pit, man. I mean, we look out for snakes on the trail. All we, the time. We try to keep an eye out for that because. No, no last try. Thing, yeah, we, <laughs> last thing we want to do is step on a snake. All right. And we have walked right past them. Yeah. Um, and we actually did see today out in on the trails we were on, um, Shannon saw two snakes. Yeah. All right, so Karen is on her, <laughs> it's her high-rise meal spot. <laughs> so while I'm out doing my tea walk, so I'm across this. So according to this, give it three feet or more. We definitely were giving it more. Um, you know, all fun and games, we were laughing, sitting up on the table. It, uh, it creeped us out, I guess, not because we saw a snake, probably because it was our first rattlesnake that we've encountered and um, that it was just hanging out in the fire pit. Uh, it was kind of eye-opening. I check all kinds of stuff when we pull into camp looking for things living never thought to look in the fire pit um the park ranger said that he was cold so my guess is he went in there looking for the warmth of an old fire on the rocks which tells me that's not the first time that guy's done that so pretty pretty smart so thanks everybody for joining us today as we went wandering out yonder here in Parker Dam State Park. We appreciate you guys tagging along with us. I uh, want to take a second to say thanks to everybody who um, has subscribed to the channel. We really, really appreciate it. It just thrills us to death. We and love reading the comments. Yeah, it just yeah. it really makes our day when we hear that we have given some information to somebody that's been helpful or you've enjoyed it or whatever the case might be. We really do appreciate it. Um, anyhow. So we are off next to Cook Forest State Park tomorrow. Yes, yes, and we're excited about that. Hope that you guys will look for that video. It's coming up next. Um, anyhow, thanks for coming with us to Parker Dam State Park. We'll see you guys later. Bye.